viewers, welcome to another super exciting edition of Trap Talk. I am Ara. Of course, you can call me Ara Nimi. We're here to inform, inspire, educate, and promote the large community of business owners, entrepreneurs across different sectors in Africa. Today, I'm not here alone. I'm here at Instinct Professional Services, and I have Mr. Tolu David, the CEO and co-founder of Instinct, and I also have Mr. Body Van Collin, who is the Executive Director of Sales. Welcome, Mr. Van Collin and Mr. Tolu. Super excited, you know, uh, to have you guys here. We want to hope that um, this story will encourage uh, viewers watching us. Okay, so Instinct. Now, let's talk about Instinct. You are passionate about revolutionizing the African technology space. So tell us about Instinct itself, how it all started, what exactly is Instinct about? I will start from the beginning. My co-founders and I, uh, we were in the bank working as a staff. However, what we do for the bank is to provide solutions. Um, I, for one, I was uh, part of the solution uh, uh, solution delivery departments of the bank. And uh, we churn out a whole lot of innovation uh, 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 for banks. And we saw adoption, acceptance of the people in the marketplace to those solutions. Uh, and at some point, we felt because there are three key issues. Uh, uh, you know that the bank is facing when it comes to solution delivery and I'll quickly go over those three things. Um, number one is the adoption. Uh, so people uh, buy foreign solution for instance to adapt it to uh, African processes is difficult. Uh, so we saw that. Number two we saw very huge price gap. Uh, so we uh, we look at it and say, if a bank can be paying a million X plus for solutions that are foreign, we could provide this solution at even 10 times cheaper, which is one of our you know, business model that we then adopted. And number three is we saw a whole lot of things. I call it exodus. Uh, people moving from Nigeria to go look for greener pasture. Uh, not the movement that is the issue, but it then tells on the kind of solution support that most banks are getting. Uh, so if you buy a company's uh, products, somebody has been trained to manage those solutions and all of a sudden the person resigned. Uh, it was very difficult sourcing for local alternatives to replace the person. So we felt, why don't we provide solution and then guaranteed a better support for banks? And those are the three things that we felt is the problem that made us to start in stick. Okay. What other sectors do you prefer solutions? Is it just the banking sector or what other sectors? Okay, so we, we started out uh, to say it is better and th this is for every entrepreneur. Um, you always start a business from a position of strength. Uh, because we had our background from BFSI space, if I say BFSI is banking and other financial institutions. Uh, so if we had a background in that sector, why don't we, you know, just start off from the place? But however, the solution we are providing is enterprise solutions across all sectors. Uh, so we define it to say, how will our journey be? Is it to focus only on banks? Uh, we now said we will look at four different areas to start with. And those areas are um, education, health, uh, uh, and I think uh, logistics uh, uh, sector. But we have done remarkably well in BFSI space in the last three years. All right, so I know you mentioned something about the challenges along the way. So starting from five years ago, that's 2015, what are the challenges that you've had, Mr. Rampagin? Okay, thank you very much. We've had lots of challenges, okay, ranging from setup. We started from the scratch. So, for us, we had to take time to think through about what we want to do, the problem that is in existence, like I said, the opportunities we have identified in the problem, 
then the solution we are going to bring on board to solve those problems. All those things were actually challenging, it took us time. But because we were sure, we were certain that in this space there are a lot of problems, there are a lot of challenges, and we have also identified what will be our opportunity in those challenges. So we, we gathered together, we designed solutions to the problem. So it was challenging, but because we persisted, we stayed true. There is what we call staying power. Of course, several times you will feel like you should just retrace your step, maybe to go and look for paid employment yes, again. Yes, but again, yes. when you have that focus, that vision, okay, so that's one of the challenges. The next one is now to gain acceptance mm -hmm. in the market. Sure. You see, people will look at you that, especially people that will work together, they look at you that, ah, is it not to know why should I pay him this kind of money, okay? Because when you now take your solution to them and you're also trying to get something remarkable, a premium on it. So maybe you say they should pay you 10 million naira. Or even because we also know that they pay so much money to OFSS, that's all those funny solutions. So if you too, you try to put dollar on your solution to say, okay, give me $500,000, they tend to look down on you that, why should I pay? So to market to put your solution in that level that they will accept it, all those things were challenging. But like I said, we stayed true, we believed in ourselves, and over time they began to say, okay, maybe we should try these guys, maybe we should look at what they are, and one or two trials like this, they have not been able to look back right uh, Okay, let, let me add to what Buddy has said. Um, uh, you know, sharing the story we started in 2015, we did not make a single revenue till 2017. And so it's enough time for anybody to give up. And so my advice is know your market, know your business model. If your business model is going to take you time, so also you have to be prepared for it. At some point, but they will bear me weakness. We had to call ourselves to say we need to self-fund this company again. And we had to, you know, do capital pooling. And it is those capital pooling that sustain us in those periods that we'll have given up. All right, Mr. Tolu, that was really an insightful one. So you mentioned the challenges that you've had. I'm sure there were failures, there were downsides along the way. Can you share with us those times, those trying times, those hard times? Okay, so um, I, I will share a few ones, you know, uh, based on experience. When we started in 2015, there is no office. Uh, just like everybody that is starting business, we are just uh, meeting in eatery, meeting in, in uh, uh, our houses, inside churches, inside our car. That's one part. The other part is rejection. Rejection from customer. This person, you know this person very well. You think from your A-list, this person should give you something to at least jumpstart the business. You will always get those, uh, uh, you know, disappointments. Uh, but for us, you have to focus on where you are going. That's number two. Number three, even financial institution and other people that should come to your head, they will never. People want to see traction. People want to see little success. People want to see what you have done on your own before committing a, a, anything to your venture. Then the next one, we had a job bidded for and really at that time we had no money in our pocket so we were just hoping that if this one comes in it will cushion our uh, takeoff so to say so on the final day that we were supposed to to finalize the bidding process we just heard that sorry the company was not selected you know so and really, at this point, I remember that day it was myself and Tony. So when we got out in the car, we were just looking at ourselves. We couldn't utter a word because it was another round of failure. Yeah. But like he said, we have decided that it is either we succeed on this journey or whatever happens, or that we will go back and say no. So it was a means of determination with belief in what we have, in what we are doing. And today the story has changed. So. <laughs>
So you talked about the, the, the stories, the downside of the failure. So what would you say kept you going? I mean, why didn't you give up when they slammed the door against you and all of those things that happened? Okay, let me, let me, let me state it this way. You know, you mentioned that when you when you draw a vision for yourself, mm. just come up with something that won't that is unbelievable by others. Mm. Okay, the, the 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 size of your dream, mm. of your vision, if it is very big enough, the way to be propelling you, you will not even be able to go back by yourself. Here we have a slogan. When you say instinct, people will respond. I, I believe. So for us, the belief. It, 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 it has even graduated from ordinary belief. It has become a conviction. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when when belief has become a conviction, you are ready to give everything. everything yes. Takes. So that that sense of determination is what I remember in those days. You are living home. Your spouse, your wife will be expecting you to say, take. Hey. <laughs> 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 you do have an assurance that you bring anything back. But you are still going. In fact, at times we will ask ourselves, why are we even coming to this office? <laughs> yes, because you don't have that assurance that, but the belief is there that mm. one day this thing will happen. Mm. And you know, the day it happened, I remember we go to office that day, we said, let's go out for marketing. That's how we do. And if you remember, that day we never knew that we were going to get anything, but we just went out for marketing. So we go there, and one of our big friends, in the bank, who he just saw us, I mean, looking at us pitifully, <laughs> say, say this once, maybe so that they will not even go and die <laughs> in Victoria. <laughs> Let me see what I can do for them. So he just called us, Look at this thing, what can you do? What can you do? Yeah. So, and what can you do as the recording? So we just felt that, oh, God, this one, don't let it be like others. So let it be that we have seen what we can do here, and truly they will give us. So, we looked at it, I think there were about four items. Mm. And he said, said, Oh, he <laughs> said, We can do everything. Even now, I was saying, It's not that we can do everything. Let's just look at one, you know? <laughs> but he said, We can do everything. We can do everything. <laughs> so the guy said, Are you sure? We said, Yes. He said, Okay, go and submit the proposal. And we brought the proposal. And you know, we were on it, we were on it, we were on it. So one day they just called us that. They are, prepared, they are true with a word letter and send it to us. So, and I think it was about 27000 Maybe 27000 or 28000 dollars then. You know? <laughs> so it came. That was our first major contract. You know? So when it came, we now looked at it and so, said, oh, this thing is possible. So this thing is possible. Since then, we have no been back. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. So at what point did you get that far. That whole point did you get the feeling that instinct was the right idea. So when did you know that this is the idea I need to follow? So as a leader for me, I would say from day one, it was very clear. Again, the challenge that we have is I'm not going to be the only one taking this journey to where we wanted to reach. Yes, my co-founders are there. People will join us. Partners will join us. So we said, it may not be clear to people if you say you want to take out giants. Most of the guys that are competitors, they are foreign, you know, uh, 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 companies that have over hundreds of thousands of employees. So we said, okay, let's allow people to believe in this dream. And that's why we are saying, whenever we say stick, just say I believe. Anything we say, just follow it. Know that we, we have personal conviction from day one. And so for me, I would say, at the beginning, it was very clear. Wow, that's very nice. I picked something from what you said. You were saying something that you understood the fact that you won't, you won't be the one to drive this journey all alone. So you have co-founders. How do you get others to run this vision with you? The marriage is when you come together as co-founder and say you want to run a dream. Knowing fully well that uh, if those people are not with you in that journey, the journey will not get to anywhere. Uh, so I tell people that the way to get those people, you know, most people will say, how, how would I find a co-founder? They are your friends. They are people around you. The only thing you need to look at is, what is my strength? 
and what weaknesses I have that I need to complement. Look at me and Bode. Bode is an orator. I don't speak very fluently and quote a whole lot of things, but I'm saying, I look at Bode. Bode is a salesman. Bode has done marketing, he's done operation. I've never done all of those things. I look at myself, I'm an IT person. Again, I have leadership quality in rally around a vision. So we are complementing each other. So that's the best way to find people to be the co-founder. But co-founder will not do. They are watchers. It's like a football match, they are coach or support staff. The real people that will score the goal, that will play the, this team, are your real staff. So how do you then find those people? So we define a matrix. We said 70-30. 70 for us is about character of those people. The other one, which is 30% is skill. So we said we can buy skill. We can train skill. We can, you know, do a whole lot of things when it comes to skill. But the character, we will not compromise. Trip Africa. I know you said like a number of things about digitization. So let me, how has this digitization helped your brand? How has it helped you grow? What impact has it made? Okay, so for, for, for us, what we are uh, doing in terms of digital transformation, if you look at it on our bottom line, you will see that in the last three years, we have consistently been growing at over 600 percent year in year out. Uh, what it then means is that the number of deals we are getting is increasing. Let me tell you the magic of how that works. If you go into an organization and digitize just one process, say I'm giving you an internet banking application, before you know it, they will start talking to you about how can you provide a sandbox? How can you provide a middleware? How can you provide uh, you know, a paperless application or document management system? So it gives us an opportunity to cross-sell within a single customer. And so it has really helped us. We have not reached a whole lot of customer, but for the few ones that we've reached, we are not just doing one thing. We are doing so many things across their digital transformation journey. Okay, so for reference, I will just mention two All right. uh, uh, because uh, there are a lot. Uh, so, most recently, we partner with a bank called UBA. Uh, UBA is running across 20 African countries. Uh, is one of the top three banks in Nigeria. Uh, we partner with them. Uh, that partnership gives us an opportunity to digitally transform their retail operations. Uh, so what we are using is a core banking solution called TME. Uh, that is being deployed across, uh, across uh, all their subsidiaries including Nigeria. Um, that's one. Number two, I'm also very proud to say uh, there is another bank with the highest uh, balance sheet size, uh, majorly in Nigeria. Uh, the name of the bank is Access Bank. Uh, our partnership with them has really made us to do quite a number of things in digital transformation in terms of uh, building microservices and all of that for them to be able to talk from say in Nigeria to their subsidiary. I'm most proud of those brands. There are other ones. If you are watching me right now and you are our customer, we appreciate all of you. But I'm just saying for time's sake, let me mention two. Uh, I will stop there. Alright, so do you have any form of corporate social responsibility? Yeah. We have um Care Foundation, yes. So, it, as a matter of fact, in, during the lockdown, COVID-19 lockdown, mm -hmm. we, we, we also participated in giving palliatives mm -hmm. to less privileged individuals. 
okay? That's just uh, part of what we have done. But going forward, King Care Foundation is going to be a well-established and robust foundation that will touch lives in critical sectors of our society, ranging from education, health, yeah. you know, uh, even human rights and stuff like that. We have that foundation and it's up and running. So let me add the model we are running. Um, and this is for most customers that are watching us. The model we run for the foundation is that 2 to 4 percent of our revenue is committed to this foundation. Uh, so if you pay us any money, you are not just paying us. We are actually giving back to the society. So if any money comes to us in terms of revenue, we take between 2 percent and 4 percent and we put it in the account of the foundation and that's why we are able to do so much even on the food pal uh, uh, palliatives uh, we paid some people's uh, uh, hospital bill for childbirth uh, these are people that we don't know these are people that doesn't even have anything to do with in stake uh, these are people that we just uh, give a platform to Anybody could go to the thing, uh, uh, is www.qk.ng. Uh, okay, let's talk about the big one now. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, Instinct made it to top 200 startups on digital startups on Forbes list. I mean, that's a very, very big one. Thank you very so, much. What would you say about that? Well, well, how, has it, how has it helped your brand now? What would you say about the program? and all the old training okay so let's use this opportunity to thank uh folks and of course the gsc team um it was a wonderful thing uh you see when you are running solo and people are not passing recognition to you you may be big and other people that are close to you may not know what you are doing so one of the things that that uh, uh accelerator program has done for us it made almost everybody to be aware about what we do. That's number one. Number two for me is that recognition that we are part of the last or the top ten. And then uh, a company that would change, you know, the narrative when it comes to African processes. Uh, for me, uh, is something that we are proud of. But how's, how has it impacted us really? Uh, which is number three. Immediately after we pitched our company on the submit day, we started getting calls. And one of the uh, uh, few of the calls are coming from VC and then investment bankers. Uh, so we've done a couple of follow up meetings and we are looking at, you know, taking huge capital uh, in excess of a uh, uh, million dollars to inject into what we are doing that is working such that we can make a greater impact and uh, i think for me that those are the things that this has done for us it has put us out there uh, the only thing is we we'll continue to do what we are doing not minding that we are now out there so that the same uh, service we've been providing is replicated across africa then of course, uh, as a monitor <laughs> program, for me, it's been an high opening. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, been, it's been, especially for me personally. I'm really, really, really impressed. So if there's one thing that you tell us aspiring entrepreneur out there, you know, some people have the idea, but they don't just know how to go about it. What would be your advice to young people out there? Or some who are even striving, but they are not there yet, and and then they are like, okay, I'm going to give up. I mean, what would be your advice? Once you you have that conviction about what you want to do, for me, it's important that you stay to it. Mm -hmm. There is what you call staying power. That's assistance. There is no. The only thing you must learn to do is subject your activities into constant review. So you don't make the same mistake again and again and again, okay? But that you won't make, make mistake, forget it. I think it was this guy that wrote in, in, in one of his books, uh, Dr. Shama, you know, he said, happiness comes from good judgment. Mm. Good judgment comes from experience. But where does experience come from? 
from bad judgment. Yeah. So what are bad judgment? Those are mistakes. That is, it is hard for humans not to make mistakes. It's part of our journey. Yes. So you see a lot of people, they are afraid of making that mistake. Mm -hmm. They are also afraid, they are too conscious of their personality, they are human and things like that. So they'll be asking them, what would these people say? What would this be? It's not about those people. It is about you. So yeah. once you have a vision of doing something, just, of course, you can go out, look for mentoring, ask people questions, do a lot of research. But don't overstay because the same idea that comes to you is going to about 200 yeah. people yeah. at the same time. I mean, it's of a sense. Yeah. It has the sense of my yeah. story. Yeah. So, if you are deliberating too much on it, some person who doesn't have so much time to deliberate will stand up oh, and you will have that advantage yeah. of being in the market before you. So, don't deliberate too much. Just look for little, little ideas and like put them together and start. Whatever you need to learn, you will learn about it. Africa has 1.2 billion in terms of population. Nigeria alone is a huge pie, which is about one-sixth of African population in terms of uh, size, uh, in, in terms of population, which is about 200 million. Uh, so my advice is that if you are in Nigeria, you exist in the marketplace. There are huge problem that people are talking about on a daily basis so uh, people say there is no light why don't you provide uh, uh, light you can provide light through uh, other means other alternative sources would that be your solution pursue it it's legitimate people say there is hunger in the land could that be your opportunity people say there is injustice have you taken a position to say you want to fight that people say oh there is no equal opportunity in the ecosystem. What are you doing, really? Uh, for us, we have taken digitization of processes as our core. So I would say, for you watching me right now, try and pick an area where you want to, you know, uh, provide solution. All right, guys, this is where we draw the curtains. I mean, it was really insightful. It was a nice time with the big guys at Instec. I'm sure you learned a whole lot today. Don't forget to believe. All right, you can catch us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Trep Africa. For sponsorship, you can visit www.trepafrica.com. And that's what we have today on Trep Talk. Many thanks for watching, everyone. Bye for now. Trip Africa. Imagine more.